What's going on dudes? Here's your final exam. It looks crazy, it looks like a circus, but I'll tell you what, it's not that bad. It's just got a lot of parts to it, and let me kind of explain to you all the different parts. So the first thing you're doing is we're starting off and um, inside of our car. So here's, here's you, and you're starting off inside of this really cool European black car or whatever, I don't care. Um, and you're hanging out just parked up on a really steep hill. So this might be in San Francisco area, I'm not sure. Um, and the angle that this hill is parked at is at 36, uh, 36.87 degrees. So the distance, or the, not the distance, but the angle that it is from the horizontal to the, you know, how, how, how sloped the hill is, is 36.87 degrees. My question to you is knowing that information, figure out what is mu, what is the coefficient of friction, and I even ask you, is this coefficient static friction or coefficient kinetic friction? Keep in mind that you're not moving in this scenario right here for question one. And also that this is, this, this, you notice that um, if this hill were angled up just a little bit higher, this car would start to slide down. If the angle was a little bit lower, well, you wouldn't worry about it anyway. But just know that this is right at the slipping point, but you haven't slipped yet. All right, questions about that one? Okay, so the next part, and I'm sorry, Julia, but I can't answer your question directly on the recording. I'm going to post this up and use this as something to help the students. And that would be answering your questions about the exam. But uh, yes, you can, yeah, you can ask me questions if you're confused, but I can't answer you. I, I can't give you the answers to the questions. All right. So the next part is pretty simple. You release your brakes, and you just basically start to roll down this hill. We're going to assume that when you're rolling, um, you have no friction that you're worrying about as far as static or kinetic friction. And we're also not worrying about air resistance. Okay? Just imagine that this, uh, I mean, if, if it really confuses you, just think of this as a big ice block that is sliding down frictionlessly down this hill. And I give you the distance that the hill is. I say the distance of the hill is 100 meters. And what I mean by that is the distance from where you're parked to the ground is 100 meters. That's the length that you would have that you would travel in order to get to the bottom of the hill. Um, and it's still angled at 37 or 36.87 degrees. My question is, what is your velocity that you would reach when you make it to the bottom of the hill? Are we cool? Now, you could actually solve this in two different ways. You could go back to the old school kinematics equation that we have, or you could use energy equations. Since this last things that we've covered is actually about energy, I would encourage the energy method. But um, I'm not going to force you to use either. You can use one or the other. Or if you can think of a third way, that's great. Um, I will tell you this, though. If you do use the energy method, it will be a lot easier for you to do. You won't be able to understand it a lot better. I mean, it's the, the equation, will be, the writing will be a lot less. All right? Questions? No? No questions? All right. Part three, here's what we got. You're driving down the hill. And then what you do is you accelerate the car once you've reached the bottom of the, the hill. You accelerate the car to go to about 80 miles per hour. Okay? So, here's how the question starts. You're traveling at 80 miles per hour, and you receive a text from your friend. And you're like, sweet. And you're like trying to do the text thing. You're like texting back and forth like this, going driving. And Unbeknownst to you that as soon as you receive that text, there's a stop sign with a little kid standing at that stop sign waiting to try to cross the street 200 meters away from where you're at. But because you're texting while you're driving, which is a bad idea in the first place, but let's see what happens. Because you're texting while you're driving, you don't react for 3.5 seconds. 
It takes you 3.5 seconds to, to finish your text and then look up, see the stop sign, and slam on your brakes. During those 3.5 seconds, you are actually moving at 80 miles per hour. Okay? Once you hit 80 miles per hour, you slam on your brakes and you just start to skid. Like that. Let's assume that the coefficient of friction between your wheels and the ground is 0.75. So this time I give you the coefficient of friction. Then my question to you is, when you stop, do you end up stopping before the stop sign? Or do you end up stopping after the stop sign? And if it's before the stop sign, if you end up stopping like 10 feet before the stop sign, then I want you to plug in your answer as negative 10. Because that means you have 10 feet to go until the stop sign. If you end up stopping like 10 feet after the stop sign, then I want you to plug in your answer as positive 10. Actually, you don't even need positive because the computer can figure out that in the first place. Does that make sense to you? Are we cool? Any questions, comments, concerns, vomits, etc.? I believe I gave you all the information you need. What is the angle? Oh, there is no angle. Uh, this road right here is horizontal right here, completely horizontal. So there's no angle that you have to worry about. Oh, I'm sorry, the angle of the other part. It was, uh, I, I give you the information, I, I actually write it down. Um, I didn't draw it up on the picture, but it's, I think it's like 36.87 degrees. Okay? All right. Yeah, but this part right here is completely horizontal. And again, you could invoke the old school kinematics equations. You could technically solve this using energy equations. My hint to you is actually, to be honest with you, I would do the kinematics equations. They seem a little bit easier in this case. But anyway. All right, second part, or fourth part. We're on the one, two, three, four. All right, so check this out. You end up almost hitting the kid, and a cop sees you. And so you're like this convicted criminal, I guess. So you just gun it. You're like, oh no, there's a cop after me. So you drive your car, and you're at the docks, and you see this loading ramp. And the loading ramp ends at an angle of 60 degrees, okay? And what you see is you see this uh, shipping crate that is being held by a crane, like this. I don't know how to draw a crane. Maybe later. There we go. That works. Sorry. Oh, whoops, you can't even see that. Uh, let's draw it. Okay. Shipping crate. All right. You see a shipping crate that is being held by a crane, okay? And the shipping crate is 80 meters above the edge of the ramp. It's also 80 meters out from the edge of the ramp. So my question to you is, at what velocity do you need to go in order to make it into the shipping crate if you make it in at the apex of your trajectory. I know, that's a lot of confusing words. Here's what I mean. When you launch off this thing, you're going to be launching off at a parabola. Agreed? At the highest point of your parabola, that's called the apex. It's your maximum height. So, what velocity would I need to have in order for my maximum height to be 80 meters above the, above the ground? That's what my question is. Does that make sense to you? I know, that one's a little confusing. All right, cool. The next part. I'm going to zoom in on this thing right here. I ran out of room in my uh, whiteboard, but um, your car ends up landing inside of the shipping crate. So here's your car, and here's you inside of it. And 
after it crashes into the back of the shipping crate. By the way, this, this shipping crate is held up on to the crane by a big cable. It swings up. Okay? I give you the velocity that this thing moves at. I say the velocity of this, you know, of both of these things is 21, 21 something. I think it's like 20 something meters per second. I forgot exactly what the numbers were. But I tell you, the velocity that this thing moves at is 20 something meters per second. And it swings up. How high above? No, no, no. Not how high. It's at what angle does this thing get to? So it's kind of like it goes up and then it's going to swing up and then it's going to stop and come back down. At the highest point that it, it gets to, what's the angle that you can reach? Okay? Any questions about that problem? Um, you're basing this, all this information on this new velocity that I give you. Now, I think that it's something like velocity is equal to 21.8 meters per second or something like that. You'll see it in the quiz, it will be exactly that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What I'm trying to do is I try to separate these problems. So say you screw this problem up, then you don't need this information to solve this problem over here. Even though all the problems are all connected to each other, I'm trying to separate them out a little bit. So that way if you screw up something in the beginning, it doesn't mess you up for the rest of the, the test. So I give you the new velocity that this thing, that after you land in your car, it's going to crash into the thing and it's going to start to move. This is actually covering a topic of physics that we haven't covered uh, as far as like how to find that new velocity. It's called collisions. It was actually the next thing I was going to get to, but I never ended up getting to it. Um, so instead of asking you to calculate how fast the thing moves after it crashes into the uh, crate, I tell you what the answer is. And, and this time I told you it's about 21 meters per second or something like that. Does that make sense to you? All right. The last part. The last part, I'm still kind of working out, but after this thing swings up, you shoot out your grappling hook. So apparently you weren't an escaped convict, you were like James Bond, like some kind of secret agent. You didn't want to be caught by the cops because it would blow your cover. You shoot out a grappling hook so that the angle over here is 60 degrees, and the angle over here is 30 degrees. Now I finally give you the mass of the car. I believe I told you that the mass of the car was 940 kilograms, and that's just the car. The crate that you land in is also 940. So I give you the mass of you and the car, or the, you, the car, and the crate. And I ask you, if there were a, like a scale in here that measured how much weight or what force is pulling on that cable, what would it read? So you suspend your car and this shipping crate at an angle where the two cables that are holding it is 60 degrees and this cable is 30 degrees with the vertical. And my question, yes, you're absolutely right. My question is, what is the tension in the first cable? Are we cool? So to recap the whole thing, I know it's a fun problem, isn't it? You're sliding down this uh, incline, this hill, or no, you start at the hill, you're parked. 
And then um, you're just at an angle, and I ask you to find what is what is the coefficient of friction between the wheels and the, and the ground. And I give you the angle. And then I say, okay, you let the brakes go, and you go, ah, and you fly down this, uh, this you know, hill. The hill is 100 meters long, and you don't touch the brakes a single time in that entire process. What is the velocity that you're going to be reaching? And then I ask you to convert it to miles per hour. So I think that the answer you're going to get is in meters per second, then I ask you to convert it to miles per hour. It's a pretty straightforward, easy thing to do. Then what you're going to do is you're going to be going, you uh, accelerate the car or decelerate the car so that whatever velocity you reach over here is 80 meters miles per hour, 80 miles per hour. I don't tell it to you in meters, I mean miles per hour this time. But you, um, you get a text, and while you're texting, um, as soon as you get the text, you, there's a stop sign with a kid in front of it that's 200 meters away. This is completely the horizontal part. And so you don't respond to stepping on the brakes until 3.5 seconds after you receive the text. So you've moved the distance at 80 miles per hour. You know, for a certain amount of time, or 3.5 seconds, and then you step on your brakes and you slide over here. The coefficient of friction between your wheels and the asphalt, in this case, is 0.75. Okay, then you jam on your gas again, and you try to make it into a jump so you can jump up into this crate that's hanging out above the ocean uh, to escape from the cops. I know, I know. What kind of crazy thing that Mr. does Mr. Bell think of in his head? It's just what I did. Um, you shoot out of velocity, and at the apex of your jump, um, you land inside of that crate. What is the velocity at which you left the um, left the ramp at in order to make that? And I give you the height that the crate is above the, the ground. Apparently, the apex and the maximum height you reach is 80 meters. Okay. And then, over here, you, I tell you the velocity at which you um, land inside that crate at. And then the, the crate and you s swing up as a result in a pendulum kind of fashion. How big of an angle between here and here do you get to? Um, in order to, I mean, because I gave you the velocity is even 20 meters per second, or something like that. Don't quote me, don't, don't put in 20 in your answer. Put down the, the numbers of the uh, equation gave you, the, the question gave you. And then the last part is, you swing up, maybe you swing higher than 60, maybe you swing lower than 60, but in the, in the end what you're doing is, you swing up and then you shoot a grappling hook out and you catch another part of the crane so that it kind of keeps you up high like this. The angle of this rope is 60 degrees with the vertical. The angle of this rope is 30 degrees with the vertical, and there's a uh, scale in that rope measuring the tension. So what is the tension that that thing will feel once all the dust has settled? That's your final exam. I threw in a few uh, multiple choice questions in there. Um, I threw in like 10 Multiple choice questions, uh, there are options A, B, C, D, and E. The reason why I did that is because I wanted to make this test more like uh, an AP exam, even though it's kind of fantastical and fun and, and crazy. Um, the AP physics exams are going to have multiple choice parts and a calculations part. So basically, I'm giving you the calculations part, and I threw in a few multiple choice. Here's my hint to you, is all of the multiple choice questions that I gave you, are really in there so that they can help you figure out um, they're really in there so they can help you figure out all the parts to this thing. I, I put them in there really to help you rather than to make you do more work, to be honest with you. So use those multiple choice questions wisely. Alright? What points will it be worth? The multiple choice questions will be worth one point the calculation part will be worth a few more. That's the only part of the test that I haven't written yet, so I have, can't tell you exactly. Um, but I would say that this final exam isn't going to be worth like an exorbitant amount of your grade. 
Uh, I would say that it would be worth maybe like three homeworks. But you can't quote me on that because I don't know exactly. I just don't want, if you guys don't do well on this one, I don't want to kill you. But I do want to give you some extra time because I thought of this thing and I thought, man, this thing is rad, it's awesome, it's fun, but it also might take a while and I don't want to give you guys this big time constraint to do it. So I'd rather just give you the entire weekend and like three days to, to solve this problem or to solve this all of these parts. Don't stress yourself out and just like kill yourself trying to do this thing. I know you, Julio, what you'll do is you'll like spend all of your waking time on this exam and then like shirk your other exams. Don't do that. Um, work a little bit on it, take a break. Work a little bit on it, take a break. Work a little bit on it, take a break. Don't kill yourself doing these exams. Okay? You promise? And that goes for everybody else too. My goal is not to freak you out. The, the, the worst thing that one of my professors did to me was he gave me a week long exam. And I hated it. Because it took me a whole week to do it. Now, granted, I think that that exam was way harder than this exam right here. But, um, you know what I mean? I just, it, it, I, I didn't sleep for an entire week. I would stay up all night doing all of these problems and it was just a pain and I hated it. And I hated my professor for doing that to me. So that's not my intention here. I'm not trying to make this week-long exam and then give it to you. I actually think that this should be a day-long exam and I was gonna give it to you as a, I was, or yeah, this should be a day-long exam. That's what I was gonna give you. But instead, I figured I'd give you like four days to do it. Okay? Alright, I will stop the video then.